Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Strip Club. My name is Daniela, and I'm going to show you a new pattern that uses two and a half inch strips. It's, it's, yeah. it's called Almost a Lone Star. <laughs> it's not quite a Lone Star, right? right? right. We're going to use two and a half inch strips and the strip tube ruler to make this quilt. What you have here on the wall is a queen size quilt. It is not hard. Do you believe me? Yes. Yes, yes I know you believe me. It is made from three simple blocks. Let's start by showing you those blocks. One block. <laughs> Two blocks. And three blocks. I can do that one. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear her? She said I can do that one. So with those three different blocks, we are going to make this giant, not quite a Lone Star quilt. We're going to use a strip tube ruler to make these blocks. The strip tube ruler, if you don't already have it, run. Don't walk to your local quilt shop. This is strip tube junior. He will work for this um, size, for these size blocks. I'm going to show you how to do it with um, Senior, we call him lovingly senior. He was the original ruler we came out with for the strip tube ruler. He goes up to nine and a half inches. He'll do everything the little one will do. Um, the little one is just better for smaller cuts. So um, you need both. This one for the bigger, that one helps with the smaller ones. So strip tube ruler. It is something that Cozy Quilt Designs uh, makes. It's something my mom made me do. <laughs> One of our very first uh, strip club patterns used this technique um, to make the very traditional Roman stripes quilt, except we used with, um, we used a square up ruler, a basic square up ruler. And then after a while, my mom said, you know, you should think about making your own ruler to make this easier. And I said, okay, yeah, you know, it's just more work, I didn't want to do it. And then the next day a customer said, you know, you should think about making your own ruler. <laughs> I promise you it was the next day. It's like when you learn a new word, and then all of a sudden, everybody is using that new word. And you're like, where have I been with that new word? Anyway, it was exactly the next day. And I thought, really? You think so? So <laughs> strip tube roller, um, we came out with it in 2007. Wow. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we just keep, just keep making more. Every few months, just keep making more. You want to see how it works? Yes. Yes. The first thing you'll do is sew two strips together. These are print strips from a strip set. We started with two and a half inch strips. So you have two of them sewn together. Hopefully they measure four and a half inches. <laughs> That's when you're sewing a good day, right? Four and a half inches wide. Now on the back here, I have a four and a half inch background fabric. I put them right sides together. Tip with batiks, right side, wrong side. If it looks good, it's good. Right side together. Now we're going to sew quarter inch seam up along the top and a quarter inch seam down the bottom to make the tube. The tube, is kind of the tube is kind of like an elephant trunk. So we have the strip, we have the tube, strip tube roller. We're going to put the designated measurement of the strip tube roller. That's the line um, down the side. They're numbered. The, whole, the solid lines are whole numbers. The dash lines are half numbers. Our original rulers didn't do that. They were all solid lines. And I had um, somebody say to me, you know, you should really think about making those halves dashed. And I was like, <laughs> well, of course. Why didn't we think of that? So ever since then, we changed our rulers. Now, here's a little tip. The half is between your whole numbers. So four and a half is between four and five. I know, right? Sounds obvious, but when you're using the ruler, sometimes you don't see where it is. So the best thing to do is to kind of mark with either um, GE Designs has cute little arrows, repositionable arrows, or you can use uh, masking tape or something to mark the line you're going to use. Once you've marked your designated line, you will place that line on the bottom stitching line. Bottom stitching line. You'll cut up and cut down to cut out a triangle. Triangle might look a little bit like this. You pull that triangle away from your strip set and then when you open it up, you get a diagonally pieced square. Brilliant. 
nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> because it is brilliant. And look, I have a mug to prove it. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's going to make my whole week that right there. OK, so we've cut out a triangle. We open it up. And we have the square that is the same size as the measurements on your ruler. So when you cut out your triangle, you're not really cutting out a triangle. You are cutting out a square. Now we have these little dog ears. We have to cut off those dog ears. The best way to cut off the dog ears is to close that triangle. Take our strip tube ruler, put the same measurement, but now the other direction. Put that measurement on the line, and you'll be able to perfectly cut off your dog ears. Is your $10 tip. Is that your? No, thanks. <laughs> Whoopsie. So we have this cut out. We have a triangle that's been cut out of the tube. The next thing we want is to cut out another triangle off of the top stitching line. So we'll just flip the ruler around and put, it, uh, put the same measurement on the top stitching line now and cut out a triangle. You'll get another one, same fabrics, but different fabric placements. This block and this block have the same fabrics, but you can see they're different placements. So they came from the same tube. Do you see it? <laughs> Fun. That's a whole other level of play right there. <laughs> OK, your other $10 tip. I told you to put your triangle on the top stitching line. Whether you're left-handed or you're right-handed, that becomes kind of an awkward cut. The first one's not bad, but this one, if you're right-handed, or the other way around, left-handed, it's an awkward cut. But you have to cut off of this stitching line. So instead of changing your ruler, your $10 tip is simply flip your tube over, and now that same stitching line is on the bottom. So just flip the tube up and down, up and down. Keep your triangle in the same position. It will always cut like this. So $10 tip. I have yet to get the $10. But, you know, maybe one day. But I, I got a cute, brilliant mug, so I got that going for me. You kind of cut out a bunch like this. Did you catch my mistake? Fresh cut. Oh, fresh cut. That's true. No, this is my mistake. From this strip set, because it has a background, you will get this block. Ah. Same concept. This one, background, two strips. To get this, this one, it's all strips. Right? Same concept, same way to do it, just different placements of the fabrics. This one from this, this one from this. Two strips on one side, two strips on the other. Background on one strip on one side, strips on the other. So those are the two pieced blocks for one, two, three different blocks. The next trick is just laying it out, putting it together. In this beautiful quilt here, which show off a lot of fabrics from our friend Jessica, who designed a line called Gypsy. We have in here the center. Oh, do you see the sparklies? Yeah, we threw in some fairy frost just to make it fun. We have the block that uses nothing but strips. And here we have a block that uses half strips, half background. These are placed strategically to have a secondary star in the middle of the not quite alone star. You see it? Makes it just a little more interesting, gives it a, a pop of interest. When we lay out, is it brilliant? <laughs> when we lay out the pieces for this, we're going to build them in quadrants. So we won't lay out an entire row as we normally do for quilts. Instead, we're going to lay out from the center to the top left and make four of them. And then when the four get sewn together, it'll have two long seams, three long seams to sew the whole thing together. It's just an easier way to put a lot of little pieces into a bite-sized component. We'll also tell you in the pattern pressing directions so that when you do sew the four quadrants together, those seams will, will nest. Uh, I was going to tell you something else. So the fun element here 
and in the fun corner, it's all nothing but those three blocks that I showed you. So four quadrants together, and then we sew on borders. In this case, we just have a simple border that's the same as a background and then blue. We chose a nice crisp white to go against all of these fun, bright prints. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. When, the, um, when Liz, who made this quilt, made it, she deliberately put four blocks from the same strip set in the corner, in the center, so that you have sort of this pinwheel effect. That was intentional. And if you're sewing quadrants together, you have to think about that as you put the pieces together. Those four will be the same in every identical one. Not quite a lone star. Would you like to see it in another colorway? Yes. And <laughs> resounding yes. And maybe another size. Is that the sweetest baby quilt ever? Do you want to be a baby again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> of course. Yes, ma'am. Yes. This, um, Maureen put this together and she opted for a very small border bef between the blocks and the binding, just to make sure the points don't get lost. Lovely? Yeah. Different layout. So the quilt has different sizes and each size has a different layout. It's not just a smaller version of the previous one or the bigger one. You got it? Paparazzi? Everybody got it? Okay. And now, another sample. Look what happens when Daniela gets the pattern written early. <laughs> it also helps that it's an easy quilt. Oh, this one's bigger. <laughs> My wingspan is not that big. <laughs> Did you get it? Are we good? Um, this, is, this is my next line of fabric with Timeless Treasure, so you get a sneak peek. This is called Tonga Posey. I wanted to call it um, Paper Flowers. Doesn't that look like Paper Flowers? Yeah, but I think that name was already taken, so Tonga Posey it is. Very sweet, perfect for spring. That'll be coming out in the future. Tonga Posey. Pretty? Yes. You can imagine it in just about any fabrics. What you want, whatever you decide to do, is contrast from the background and the strips because that defines the whole pattern. Doesn't have to be white, doesn't have to be cream. Go crazy. Make it a different color background. Do you have any questions on the quilts? Yes, ma'am. These, these particular strips are ones that we cut from fabric we have on our floor. You can start with the jelly roll. So it's just strips and background. That's all you need to make the quilt and borders. Well, since I have, yes ma'am. How many jelly rolls can it take? This one takes 68 strips. So if you have two bundles of 40, that would do it, or four bundles of 20, <laughs> or go to your stash. <laughs> Got another question in back. Oh, same question as the one that's in front. 68 strips, I have to check because I'm not good with numbers on my feet. It says 68. Okay, good. Okay, um, I have some quilts that I'd like to share with you, if you'll let me. Yes, yes, please. Um, we have borrowed some quilts from Hoffman and from Kaufman. They are fabric companies, and they were kind enough to lend us some quilts for Road to California. They're not mine. I'm going to have to send them off sometime soon. But I thought, since I have you here, that I share them with you. People like to see quilts, right? Yes. May I have volunteers? If you could, it was pre-established that we'd have volunteers. Um, yeah, if you could hand me, just hand me the, the little one up on top. Yeah, yes. Oh, okay. And come on up here and hold it with me so that we can have a nice, oh, it's upside down. This one is particularly fun because th I think it was designed by a local teacher. Um, and it shows off the sweetest little bird print. Aww. Isn't that lovely? It's called Birdland. And um, if I remember correctly, Nancy Coonigan designed it for Hoffman. 
Sweet, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Such soft, lovely prints. <laughs> it's good? Oh. Yes, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> What's next? Isn't this fantastic? So also from Hoffman, they have a panel of um, large print flowers called Kablooms, which I love that name. Cindy McCracken is a designer that came up with this pattern. And it uses different panels cut and then pieced together to create this effect here. So appreciate the design, the fabrics, the quilt, and the quilting. Do you see the quilting? So that's a joy to see. I believe I have another, ooh, oh, it's just stunning. <laughs> really lovely. Um, I think I have another pattern, another one that will use the same kablooms. Let's see if that gets next. Yes, that is it. Oh. Yeah, that's good. When she stepped to my way a little bit, okay. So here we have kablooms, and Hoffman also has a digitally printed fabric called um, Supernova, I think, or Spectrum. Can't remember which one. But in here, all these prints, all these colors, they all come from the same fabric. It's a beautiful radiating panel, beautiful colors. And so it's pieced and then put back together again. Also by Cindy McCracken. Also beautifully quilted. Mm-hmm. Yeah? The, yeah, so the, the, the darks and the grays, the black and the grays, and then the colors, they're just two print fabrics, digitally printed fabrics, that are cut apart and pieced together. And then these are bloom fabrics. So I think this just uses um, four panels. Thank you. <laughs> That's hard work holding up quilts. And if we're lucky, we have the third one that uses the same kabloom. Right? Yeah, just beautiful. Also kablooms, also designed by Cindy McCracken. What's next, ladies? Okay. Yeah, this is fairly large, yeah. This is um, by Robert Kaufman, and they have a panel called Effervescent. Why don't you step to my way a little bit? <laughs> so the panel is the piece in the middle, and then we have stars all, piece stars all the way around it. Digitally printed fabrics now are coming, more and more beautiful ones are coming on the market. It's, it's a whole new wave of possibility with our quilting fabric. So this is effervescent, expanding skies, I believe is the pattern name. Robert Cuthbert. Thank you. Up next, this was another panel of um, wild kingdom animals. And we cut it apart. And the main reason I want to show you this is it features our book, Panel Play. So we have taken um, the techniques from Panel Play, which is all of the different piece work. The panel itself had a lot of animals on one cut of fabric. So we framed and then added piecework around it to create a beautiful quilt. Panel Play is a book originally designed by Barbara Becker. And we have taken over the title. It's now part of the Cozy Quilt Designs line of um, books. And it's a great way to use panels. It has lots of ideas in it. This is one possibility. Let's um, grab here, drop down, and we'll show them the bottom. Really nice, isn't it? Beautiful prints, too. Look at, look at that. <laughs> Cutie. OK, that's panel play. And this was our top seller at Road to California. Yeah, this is our this is our long one. So let's let it drape drape off the stage. Okay. 
Isn't that terrific? Yeah. It's a panel. So the animals, the letters and animals are a panel. The stars are pieced. So they're cut apart by rows, and then the stars are pieced in, and then more of the animals. <coughs> so sweet. And I think one of the reasons, first of all, it's striking. It's beautiful. It's great for kids. Um, it's also great for boys. There's a lot of great girl fabric out there, but this one's for boys. If you grab to um, go down about halfway, and we'll show them the bottom half of the alphabet. Really nice, isn't it? And what is you, boys and girls? Unicorn. So um, this pattern is called Stars of the Zoo. Um, I think the line is called Zookeeper. And then this, this is really fun. This is one panel that uses um, seven, seven cuts of a single panel, the same panel, seven different ones, with one block wonder technique to create this beautiful effect. So if you know One Block Wonder, you take the same print, you stack it, you cut it, and reassemble it. But now it's done with panels. So you have essentially one panel in the center that is the fox, and then the piecework all around the outside is the other panels that are cut apart. Isn't that nice? Look at his face. I know. It's neat. They're taking it all in. Just taking it all in. Are we good? Okay. Do you have a question? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, she said we had a nice booth at Road to California. We had the party lights going on. We had the party tent. We were at the party booth. Chocolate was good. You had to know us to get the chocolate, though. OK, uh, something else I want to share with you, because I'm very excited about this. One of my favorite notions was off the market for a long time and is now back. Do you remember, I think it was exactly one year ago at the February presentation, I talked about my 14 favorite things. Yes. One of them was something called Hugo's Amazing Tape. Well, then soon after that, Hugo's Amazing Tape went off the market. It was a whole big thing. I don't know the whole story, but now it's coming back. It's not called Hugo's Amazing Tape anymore. It's now Amazing Tape, and in fact, rumor has it they're changing it to Amazing Wrap, because it was never really a tape. This is what it looks like. It's just a clear roll. You could say, Daniela, that could be Scotch Tape. How do I know there's anything special to it? When it comes off the roll like this, it is like um, a thicker shrink wrap, and it is perfect for holding spools, the thread of spools together, because it will attach to itself, but not to anything else. So in other words, I had, I had this bunch of fabric that I had to bring in, but I knew if I grabbed it, it was all going to fall apart. So I took a bunch of this amazing wrap stuff. As soon as I find the end, the hardest part of it, especially on camera when all these eyes are looking at you, there it is. <laughs> no, that's not it. Yeah, anyway, it works. Trust me. Yeah, make a tab. I don't want to make a tab. Trust me, it works. Just buy it. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you trust me? OK, so let me show you how it comes off the roll. It's a thicker, see it's a plastic. It's a thicker thing like this. Um, you can cut it very easily. And it, it can be reused. And it only sticks to itself, like shrink wrap only sticks to itself. So if you have um, bobbins or if you have spools of thread that just come loose, this is a great way to attach it. That's just one use for it. Um, I use it for things like this, which I promise it will come off. Um, you can also write on it. So for those who do machine embroidery and you have those stabilizers that always come loose and you try rubber bands and it's always just a pain, this is what I use to hold the stabilizer um, rolls together. I will write the type of stabilizer right here on the plastic. So now I can very easily see what stabilizer it is. Just wrap it a couple of times, and then I can grab very easily, and then this can be reused when I'm done with that stabilizer. OK, I'm determined. <laughs> I am determined. <laughs> so.
So it's called um, Amazing Wrap, and it has so many uses. You'll keep finding uses for it, and not just in the sewing room, also in the kitchen, in the garage. I uh, found the bottom one. Okay. It's adult proof. <laughs> Thanks for that. So I don't know if you can see, I'll put it against my shirt. See, it says Tonga Soleil, which is the line, the name of my next line of fabric. This is the fabric, and I knew if I just grabbed this, it would all come apart <laughs> like it did. So I just put the tape on. And it's not sticky to me right now at all, anywhere, except when it sticks to itself. I love that you write on it. You can write on it, yeah. Yeah, that is the best. And it's, and it's clear. The tape is clear, so you can wrap over where you wrote on it and still see it. And then it holds it all together. Amazing wrap. Now available at CozyQuilt.com. Click below. <laughs> all right, my friends. Thanks very much. Do you have any questions on the quilts? Anything I shared? Okay. Then we'll wrap this up, and shall we do it again next month? Yes. Okay. Thank you for coming.